Hello, and thank you for joining our Introduction to Design Thinking webinar series. My name is Keith Keating, and I'm a design thinking practitioner with GP Strategies. In this eight-part webinar series, we will be sharing the theory of design thinking from a high-level overview through each of the five phases and finishing with suggestions for ways to continue learning on your journey to becoming a design thinking practitioner. In this session, I will be sharing with you an overview of the fourth phase in the methodology, prototype. But before we start with prototype, as a quick reminder, there are five phases in design thinking. Empathy, define, ideate, prototype, and test. Empathy is where we learn about the audience. We gather all the information about them. We understand them. We take that information and we synthesize that down. And we define problem statements and evolve those into how might we questions. We then take those how might we questions and we brainstorm on them. We ideate and we come up with as many ideas as possible to solve for those questions. And then we narrow that scope and we prototype. We build quick representations of one or more of those ideas. And then of course, we test those ideas out to gain user feedback into solving their problems. In prototype, we have understood our learners. We've defined the problem statement, turned to how might we question. We've come up with a number of ideas. We've plotted them against the prioritization matrix. We've identified what we call our stars, the areas that we want to focus on. And now we're ready to take those ideas and move them forward into the prototype phase, where we build quick representations of those ideas. So in the prototype phase, there are two types of prototypes, low fidelity and high fidelity. In design thinking, we focus on low fidelity. Now, the difference between the two is a low fidelity prototype is quick, it's cheap, or it's free. It's just something for your users to react to, to be able to tell you whether or not you are on the right path, whether or not this is an idea that may solve their problems. And so, as you'll see on the screen, these are drawings. There's some clay being made. Prototypes do not have to be expensive. They should not take long to create low fidelity prototypes. Again, it's just something for your users to react to. An example of a prototype, low fidelity prototype in action is the iWatch. When Apple was first thinking about this concept, rather than actually creating a high fidelity prototype, which takes time, money, resources, it may not be worth the investment, they simply strapped the iPhone to a band and put it on their wrist. And it gives users, it gives customers something to actually react to. And that's all we're trying to do in the prototype phase is give them something to react to, to tell us, yes, you're on the right path, or no, you're not. You need to go back to the ideation phase, or you need to understand a little bit more about what our problem actually is before you try to solve it. So an example of a high fidelity prototype is where you take an idea and you sketch it out, which is low fidelity, but then you move to actually build a functional prototype and then you build a live prototype and then you go back and test it. And the difference is your low fidelity prototype should be able to be created in several hours, maybe a couple of days if you want to make it a little bit more fancy, but it should not take more than a couple of days, whereas a high fidelity prototype could take two months, three months, six months. In this example of the live app, that live app took about three months to create before you were able to actually test it out with your users to see if it solves their problem. The challenge with high fidelity prototypes is it's costly, it's time consuming, and you may be investing time and money to then find out that it doesn't meet your users' needs, or maybe the problem has evolved, or maybe it took so long to come up with that solution that they've already gone outside and they've solved the problem themselves. Think back to the example in a previous session with Doug Dietz and the MR scanner. It took an additional six months of prototyping to find the right idea that met the needs of the patients. And so it took that much longer, that much more time, and that much more money, whereas had they come up with a low fidelity prototype to begin with, 
and had that empathy research, it would have saved them that time and money. So again, we want to avoid high fidelity prototypes. We want to focus on quick representations of the ideas. One best practice is in terms of technology, consider using your vendors or consider using or reaching out to other technology companies because oftentimes they will be willing to create a quick prototype for you for free or very cost effective at the opportunity to win your business. So oftentimes I've been able to leverage either our partners or potential new partners in terms of technological solutions when looking for low fidelity prototypes. In the prototype phase, what we are focusing on is MVP, minimum viable product. We want to provide our customers, our users, our learners, just enough features or functionality so that they can provide feedback for us. So imagine that you are trying to solve a transportation problem. To do so, you can't just create a tire and give your customers the tire and have them react to the tire or even the frame of the vehicle. In this case, if you started with something like a skateboard, it is a functional prototype because it allows you to transport an object from point A to point B. User responds, yes, this is successful. You're on the right path. We can then evolve into another prototype, in this case, a scooter, where yes, we are still being able to move our objects from point A to point V, bike to a motorcycle and to a car. So at the end of the day, we want to focus on a minimum viable product, just enough features or functionalities for our customers to be able to provide feedback on the ideas to make sure that we are on the right path. Low fidelity prototypes. A couple of guiding principles about prototypes, just start building. That's one of the reasons that design thinking uses the term prototype instead of pilot, is the term pilot tends to have a negative connotation. Pilot usually means there's more structure, there's more red tape, there may be more money, there needs to be approvals involved. With prototyping, we're just creating, we're just solving. So just start building in the prototype phase. Don't spend too much time on it. Remember what it is that you're solving for. Remember those how might we questions. Remember the ideas that you've come up with, the brainstorm, and most importantly, build with the user in mind. This concludes our session on the prototype phase of design thinking. Make sure to check out our next session on the test phase. And thank you for joining us, and we look forward to sharing more ideas and best practices with you. Check out the contact form on our design thinking site to reach out to us or simply add me on LinkedIn to continue our design thinking conversation. Thank you for joining.